Hey guys, Sid from Sid's Trains here, and today I'm going to be reviewing and running my brand new Lionel Legacy Milwaukee Road S3 Northern number 261. So like I just said, this engine is brand new to me. I got it a little over a week ago, and I even did a live stream of it here on YouTube. If you want to check that out, there's a link in the top right corner, and uh, there's a link down in the description. And, of course, you can just go on to my channel page and find the video. It should be right under this video. And I unboxed the train in that video, uh, ran it around, did some Q&A with it uh, as well, and it was just a good live stream, so definitely check that out. Uh, as I said in that video, I got this from Brady's Train Outlet, which is a store in Pennsylvania. Very nice store, uh, and this engine was brand new, and... I've been loving it since I got it, so that's why I'm making this video to show off how amazing this engine is. So let's get into the review of it. So starting out with a little bit of history on the 261. The 261 is a 484 S3 type northern locomotive, and it was built in 1944 by Alco for the Milwaukee Road. And it was used for heavy mainline freight work until it was retired in 1956. But, instead of it being scrapped like most other steam engines, it was preserved and donated to the National Railroad Museum in Green Bay, Wisconsin in 1958. Uh, today, the locomotive is owned and operated by the Friends of the 261, uh, a Minneapolis-based uh, nonprofit that runs occasional and seasonal uh, excursion trains with the 261. And the engine was restored to operating condition in 1993 and has logged uh, more than 25,000 miles under its own power since that time. So this engine has a very cool history and the fact that it still exists and runs to this day is just amazing. So starting out with some features of this engine, it has the legacy control system in it, it has legacy rail sounds, fan driven smoke, and a Two features that are really cool about this engine are the cylinder steam effect, which I'll be showing you uh, later, uh, but just to give you an idea, uh, steam shoots out of the cylinders here, which is very cool uh, and very neat to see in person. And then there is also a self-adjusting drawbar in the engine, which is another very neat and kind of handy feature uh, for someone that doesn't have a, um, a layout with... Uh, wide turns on it. This reduces the minimum curve down to 054 for this engine, which is pretty good for an engine uh, that so is starting this size. Out at the front of the engine, we have the pilot, and on each side we have uh, steps. In the center here, we have a separately applied brake hose. This coupler does swing down, and that is a scale coupler. And uh, packaged separately with the engine is a O gauge coupler, so you can double head the engine. On the side, up above that, we have the coupler bar, but on this engine, it doesn't look to be um, an, an actual operating one that goes up and down, uh, but it's still a nice little touch. We have grab irons here, and then these handrails run all the way down the side of the engine. We have steps uh, going up the side and in the center here, and all of them have safety tread on them, which is a very nice touch. We have a grab iron here that is separately applied, and then inside here, it looks like we have some air pumps. Moving up. We have the headlight, and there is an LED headlight, and the number boards are on the side and in the front, and the side number boards are lighted. And then moving up, we have the marker lights, or classification lights. We have a little free-swinging bell here that does have a lanyard attached to it, which is very cool. I always like when Lionel does that. And then we also have the emergency light here, which only turns on when you put the engine into emergency stop. Down the side of the engine, we can get a good look at the detailing on the side of this engine. Uh, starting out the front here, we have these little uh, red painted wheels, which looks uh, very nice, very intricate in the detailing of it. Uh, we can get a good look at all the running gear, which looks really good when it's in operation. And there's just a bunch of piping all throughout and more uh, back by the cab, and we'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, up here, we have the continuation of these handrails. We have the throttle linkage and some more piping. And we also have some separately applied builder's plates here. One more thing to note, uh, as I said before, this engine does have the cylinder steam effect. And under this cylinder and the cylinder on the other side, there are little holes. And when you activate the cylinder steam effect, or if you uh, start the engine or get the engine moving, uh, steam shoots out 
for a uh, short period of time and then it will stop and it just looks very cool puts steam all over our smoke all over the place and it just looks really good but uh, let's move move back to the cab now moving back to the cab here we can get a better look at some of the detailing uh, underneath the firebox here we have some nice uh, piping detail and we also have the trailing truck with some separately applied detailing on it uh, underneath the firebox we also have the ash pan and the ash pan does glow red as you start to move the engine and the um, brightness intensifies as you speed it up which looks very nice we have separately applied handrails all around the door and these windows we have a separately applied ladder the trim around these windows is painted we also have a sliding window I like to keep it open and then this door does open as well moving along the top of the engine at the front we have a horn and you're, you may be wondering why does a steam engine have a horn well I couldn't really find any good information on why the 261 has a horn but I believe it has to do with the fact that this is an, an excursion train now and since this is based off the excursion model of the train they had to add a horn because of uh, modern day regulations uh, so I believe it's because of that but if I'm wrong just tell me I love to learn things so if I'm wrong just tell me in the comment section uh, moving back we have the uh, smokestack and inside is the fan driven smoke unit and to load smoke fluid into both the cylinder steam effect and the stack you just pour it down the stack moving back we have a separately applied gold whistle which looks very nice it definitely pops from the rest and something to note is that this engine doesn't only have a whistle and the horn it also has another whistle so you have two whistle sounds and a horn and I'll tell you how to operate those uh, when we uh, run the engine uh, behind the whistle we have some more piping detail and there's some even there's even some more piping detail on the other side here's a picture so moving back we have this big dome here and this dome does pop off and underneath it is the program run switch the smoke unit switch and then the auxiliary smoke unit switch which is for uh, the cylinder steam effect and it's held on by magnets and with that popped back on we can take a look at some more details we have some pop off valves here or some little red painted valves and then all the way at the back here we have a dynamo and it, and it even has a little red painted valve on it and on top of the cab we have this vent and it does slide open taking a look at the cab I can turn on a little light here and show you the inside of the cab a little better uh, we have a flickering firebox on the inside two crew figures and separately applied uh, detailing and I think some separately um, painted gauges and then down here we have the drawbar and the IR tether and speaking of that drawbar let's take a look at that so taking a look at this drawbar design is definitely different from what's on most engines on most engines the drawbar is attached to the trailing truck here and moves with the trailing truck but as you see as I'm moving this trailing truck it is not moving uh, the, the drawbar so this drawbar is what they call a self-adjusting drawbar what this does is when the train is on the straightaway the the drawbar is like this but when it goes around a turn it pulls into this little groove here and moves this way and you see that little spring if I let go of this it pops right back so the idea is that when you're on a straightaway the tender is close to the engine but then when it goes around a turn it moves away from the tender and then it allows the train to go around a tight turn that is a very cool design and I, uh, I really like this feature and Lionel even added that to their 21 inch passenger cars which is very cool with the engine out of the way we can take a look here at the tender uh, on the top of the tender we have handrails running along the sides on the bottom we have nice piping and these nice six wheel trucks on the side we have a very nice Milwaukee Road logo and we even have a separately applied builders plate at the front of the tender down here we see the other end of the drawbar and the IR tether moving up we have some separately applied uh, hand, uh, a separately applied handrail or pipe on this side these little like peg things I actually don't know what they are so if you do know what they are just tell me in the comments section and then Lionel also uh, packages this little piece here uh, with the engine and what it does is it goes around this coal door here which speaking of the coal door looks very nice 
and the doors are just molded in but they have some nice uh, uh, molded detail. Now when Eric Siegel did his video years ago, I think it was around 2011, uh, he put the piece on like this and for his engine I think he said it just fit better that way. On my engine, this is the 2017 version of this engine, so on mine for some reason it just uh, slips on this way better. So that's how I do it. Uh, it doesn't tell you the instructions, so you just kind of got to see what works for you and just go with it. Taking a look at the top of the tender, we can get some uh, better look at the handrails. We have a separately applied real coal load here, and then some more grab irons at the back and some little piping here. We have another pipe here, and then these two hatches do open. Uh, this one you open, there's not, nothing underneath it, but it is held down by magnets. And then you open this one, and here is the volume pot for the engine. Taking a look at the back of the tender, it has this nice kind of curved shape at the back, which is kind of different from a normal square tender. We have uh, separately applied ladders and handrails, separately applied steps on the side here. We have a coupler bar here, and then we have the electric coupler that can be fired from the Legacy or TMCC remote. And even the Bluetooth app, that is something I totally forgot to mention. This engine does have Bluetooth, as it is the 2017 run of the 261. So I'll, sh I'll show you that I can run it with Bluetooth uh, when we run the engine. So uh, with the details and the look of the engine out of the way, let me just give you my overall opinion and uh, kind of favorite part about this engine look wise, looks wise. So my favorite thing is that it's just a very, the proportions of it are very good. A northern type steam engine just looks very good. It's not too big but it's also not too small and the drivers on, the drive wheels on them are usually pretty uh, decent size. So I like that about this engine and the fact that it's Milwaukee Road. It's kind of different. You don't see Milwaukee Road stuff uh, all the time. So it's definitely interesting, definitely different. And uh, you'll, you'll listen to the sound and you'll understand why I like it so much. The sounds on this thing are amazing. So uh, let's uh, start this engine up. So well, uh, I have my legacy remote here. And what I'm going to do is use the extended startup. And I'll do that by holding down the startup key. This is the dispatcher. Do you copy? Copy that. Reach your time. Over. Okay, start her up. Stand by for track orders. Okay, so let's take a listen to the uh, whistle and the horn on this engine. So, this engine has two whistles and a horn, so here's the first whistle, and my favorite of them is this first whistle. That is just an amazing whistle. Uh, that is probably my favorite thing about the sounds of the, on this engine. That is an amazing sounding whistle. Uh, I'm pretty sure Lionel used the same whistle on, I think, the Southern Crescent uh, PS4 Pacific uh, probably like 10 years ago. But yeah, this engine, uh, that whistle sounds amazing. Uh, so now to toggle between the different whistles and the horns, you press the aux one key. So here's the horn. And here's the other whistle. And then if you press it again, it goes back to the first one. Yeah, I just love that whistle. So here's the, let's take a listen to the bell here. Here's the sound of water being added to the tender. My water's full. Copy that. Out. And 
when you use that feature and hold it down for the length that I did or even longer, it will give you that little bit of crew talk. And as always, if you don't like the crew talk, you don't have to use it, but personally, I do like it. Uh, so uh, here's another sound. Here's the blowdown. Very good sound and blow down. Uh, Hear some crew talk. My handbrakes are knocked off, dispatcher. Can I get a green light? Over. Roger, your track is clear. Dispatcher, over. Roger that. We got your signal. Out. Dispatcher here. Please stand by. Over. Uh, understood, dispatcher. Out. Change the camera angle here and uh, take a look uh, what happens when I press the AUX3 key on the Legacy remote. You see that? There's steam shooting out of the cylinders. That is the cylinder steam effect. It looks so cool and just the steam shooting onto the track is uh, definitely a uh, neat sight to see. And uh, you can either use the legacy remote to uh, activate that, or the train will do it automatically when you uh, start moving the train. I don't have any Milwaukee Road passenger cars. Uh, I hope to get some uh, very soon. Uh, but for now, I'm going to be pulling my uh, new Lionel 21-inch uh, American Freedom cars. And then the last car is a K-Line American Freedom car. Uh, so let's roll her out, and I'm going to use sequence control by holding down... Uh, the AUX1 key on this engine. Dispatcher, I see that signal. We're good to go. Over. Copy that. Out. So what I just did there was activate the emergency stop. So say in the real world there was an issue on the train, if someone pulled the emergency brake, the train would com come to a complete stop and the emergency light would turn on. Uh, though uh, the light is flashing in real life, it doesn't just blink. It's kind of this Mars light, kind. Of, it's called a gyro. Uh, I'm going to actually install a different kind of uh, light into into the emergency light in this engine so it looks more like the real one but that'll come at another date uh, but now let me show you that this engine does have bluetooth and that i can run it with the bluetooth app
So now I got my phone here, and if I go on to the Bluetooth app, there is the 261. If I click on it, and then press the link. There we go. It's now linked up with the 261, and now I can exit out of this screen and run the engine. I got the whistle. Got the bell. Got crew talk. Dispatch here. Hold your position. Over. Roger that. Holding for your signal. Out. And then, of course, I got speed control, so let's move her out. There we go. So as you can see, this is just an outstanding locomotive. It looks amazing. It sounds really, really good. That first whistle on this engine is just out of this world. I, I love it so much. And I definitely recommend this engine to any of you in this hobby. Definitely try and look for one. You can find them on eBay. You can. Uh, I found mine at Brady's Train Out Outlet. I think they still have a couple. So just look out for them. And I definitely recommend you trying to get one because they are just an amazing engine and well worth buying one because it's just different as well. You don't see Milwaukee Road stuff very often and it's just something unique and amazing. So definitely recommend it and as always, uh, hope you enjoyed the video and like, subscribe and click the bell for notifications, comment below and tell others about the channel. I'm Sid and I'll see you next time guys.